Welcome to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast, an ongoing source of practical strategies and tips for anxiety and ADHD. We're a collaboration of former sufferers helping those currently struggling with anxiety, panic attacks, and ADHD so they can express their true competencies in life. Now, here is Matthew, your host. Hi there, it's Matthew from PanicAttackRecovery.com. Thank you for joining me for another podcast. I really wanted to give a shout out today to everyone who has been feeling restricted and locked down due to the current COVID-19 situation. And I really wanted to share some personal insights, along with some observations that I've uh, experienced with various people in the panic attack recovery community and how they're doing. And surprisingly, many folks in the community are doing quite well. And this, this isn't about bragging. This is simply about sharing some useful information with you as a sufferer potentially of anxiety or panic attacks or ADHD, who may also uh, suffer at times from anxiety, and all of us who are feeling stressed right now. So what are some of the observations that I've experienced during this period of COVID-19? A major uh, insight for me, and it came about from talking with others in the panic attack recovery community, was really that many folks were doing quite well, even though they were isolated from others. During the lockdown period in many states and many countries, people uh, were restricted from the usual social contact that they would be able to have with uh, friends and extended families, and very much locked down, so to speak. Uh, Although the intentions were good, this obviously can have an effect on many folks' mental health. What I discovered in talking and working with a number of folks who tend to be a little on the anxious side, uh, perhaps socially anxious, some panic attack sufferers, etc., is that many of them were able to cope quite well during the lockdown because for them, they may have been a bit more on the introverted side So it really didn't bother them as much as some of their extroverted friends. Many people who normally suffer from social anxiety became very active uh, using technology such as Zoom, FaceTime, other video platforms, and other platforms for connecting with others through social media. And there was almost like a democratization, I guess you would say, of the folks who maybe didn't necessarily step up as much when they were face-to-face in society we're now speaking up and a little bit more empowered to become involved with various conferences and chats and whatnot. It started making me think about what's going on here and what is it that made people who are essentially anxious and struggle with anxiety for much of their lives now were uh, able to cope seemingly better than some of their extroverted friends and colleagues. What was going on here? One of the things that I've observed, and it certainly doesn't come from me, it comes from many people who share about personality traits, is that folks who are anxious tend to be quite creative. How their brains work, they may be creative uh, in their work, in their approach to life in general. And one of the ways they've used that creativity, I think, is to be able to cope on their own often, whether it's because they're introverted or they just need that time to themselves to recharge often away from people. They've developed sort of a coping mechanism to be able to be very stable when they're alone or restricted to um, a small group of people, such as their immediate family, such as what happened during the lockdown. But they're able to do well because they have become accustomed to functioning in this manner much of the time throughout their life. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to suggest that everyone should become an introvert or should be enjoying the lockdown. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is there is a certain segment of the anxiety, the panic attack recovery community of folks who did quite well because of their creative response to life and really having to have time on their own a lot, working well independently, things like that. And other people who were always used to being around people in social situations really had a difficult time. Another thing going on here, uh, another factor that I think played a part here is for folks who are anxious and tend to be slightly more introverted, now we were sort of on a level playing field. We all were working from home, or as many of us that could be working from home, of course not all can, but we were much more restricted and locked down and having to communicate in ways that were perhaps more comfortable for the the anxious person who was introverted. But it 
allowed them to not feel the same effect on their self-esteem that they felt in the past. Well, prior to the lockdown, we weren't functioning as much from home. Many people weren't anyway. Often the introverted people felt themselves to be at a disadvantage. So maybe from a self-esteem perspective, they felt somehow that they didn't measure up to their really extroverted colleagues or friends, and they just weren't always able to keep up as much in in in-person experiences. But now during COVID and during the lockdown, these same folks felt more on an equal footing. And so where their self-esteem had taken a beating before, in some cases because they felt that they should have been able to handle themselves better, and it wasn't really that they were handling themselves poorly during their in-person relationships, it's just that they tended to feel anxious when they were around people, at least for a period of time. And quite frankly, they would beat themselves up, thinking internally to themselves, not necessarily expressing these thoughts, but just that, you know, I shouldn't be anxious. Why am I, why am I such a wimp? Someone might say to themselves, as someone told me, was sort of their self-talk was, I'm a wimp. I should be able to handle this. I shouldn't be nervous. But often the nervousness would pass when they went out into society uh, more fully. And it was just one of those things that um, is a part of them. But as I said, that creative part is in you and that can enable you to do great things. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today is that we all have, I believe, a creative part of us that is able to help us cope and deal with things. And in particular, I think folks that were slightly introverted during this time of lockdown were able to have a bit of an edge, so to speak, uh, over some others perhaps who were used to really being outside. When I say outside, I mean outside in social relationships with others, not feeling as restricted. And they were at a disadvantage now. I'm not saying that that's a good thing either. I'm simply wanting to recognize the dynamics at play here, or I guess I should say the factors at play here that can influence people differently depending on whether they're, well, quite frankly, an introvert or an extrovert. Now, we have a helpful podcast on introvert versus extrovert that you can find on our podcast feed and on our website, and I would encourage you to listen to that in in detail. But essentially, you know, the introverted person... um, is really, it's more with their personality. So it's not that they don't necessarily like being around people at all. It's just that they become more anxious around people, at least initially. Whereas the extroverted person, it's the opposite. They find it very difficult to be alone. Interesting experience I had this fall when I went to New York City and spent some time there. While I found it really exciting to be there, and there were many places I wanted to see and do, and I I did quite a bit there, I have to say, I found the whole in-person thing, in your face, uh, no personal space, rather, in New York, it's a very busy, populated city, is you really don't have your personal space anymore. So at the end of the day, when I was touring around and doing different things, I would find myself becoming a little more agitated towards the end of the day because I didn't really have that uh, personal space or alone time at all during the day. And there was just no letting up because I wanted to see and do many things. I just wasn't able to sort of stop. And in the evenings, I utilize some of the coping strategies that I've shared with with yourselves and others that are part of the panic attack recovery community. And those were really effective. But what I had to learn was I needed that downtime in the evening for just really a short period of time to recharge and to implement some strategies that allow me to cope with the earlier parts of the day where I didn't have that personal space. My point with this is that as anxiety suffers, and as I said, many people are creative, we can all get through this. I think we will all get through COVID-19. This is not about a pessimistic prediction that we're going to be in lockdown forever, actually. It's an optimistic message with you to say we are all creative as human beings, but in particular, I believe that anxious people can often have an edge because they have ways of coping or strategies that they can develop without even knowing it to deal with the introverted aspects of life. But so too, once things open up, and they will up, they will open up, and, and things will improve, and you start going out into society, you will naturally feel some anxiety. We all will, but that's normal now. So that's really my third point as well, is that anxiety sufferers and people who are introverted all of a sudden realize that it's okay to feel anxious. Others are feeling anxious. Their, their colleagues in the past that were not ever seen as anxious, they now see an anxious side of them, and that normalizes it a bit for the anxiety sufferer. So again... There's a little bit of a boost to the self-esteem of the anxiety sufferer to say, you know what, anxiety is a normal part of life. It's a normal response to specific circumstances. In my life, there are certain triggers. So once I go back out in public again, I'm going to feel anxious. That's fine. But I can creatively implement strategies to deal with my anxiety. And 
rest assured you are not alone. We have literally shared probably a hundred different tips or strategies or techniques for that matter throughout our free newsletter, our website, our podcast, our YouTube channel. So you can certainly avail yourself of all those pieces of information, those tips, those tricks, whatever you want to call them for free. So I would encourage you to do that. And of course, there are many sources online as well, not just ours, that are available for free and can help you with anxiety. But what I'm trying to say is you've got it in you. We've all got an ability in us, a creative ability to cope with things. Sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes we feel anxious, but we can allow ourselves to recognize that anxiety will be a part when we go out and we return. But we can listen to public health officials and we can follow appropriate guidelines for social distancing or wearing masks and taking other precautions when we're in society so that we can do what it is we need to do to keep ourselves and others safe. But at the same time, to know that we have a power in us as anxiety sufferers to be creative and to stick with things. But at the same time, we're very insightful and we know that we have certain situations that trigger us and make us anxious. But we can overcome these things. And that's really my message is whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, and I would highly recommend that you listen to that podcast. We all have a creative ability, I believe, that we can employ when we're returning back post-COVID or when measures start to relax in your area, you can go back and take the appropriate precautions and you can learn to be creative and use various strategies to keep your emotional health intact, but also to keep your physical health intact. And really to spread the same attitude, the same approach with others, with your friends, with your colleagues. And I think if we all do our part, we can get through this, not only to return to where we were, but I think to improve things and make things better. As you all know, there are a number of things going on right now, along with COVID-19. And there is all a part that we can play to help things individually. I'm not talking about anything that's overly idealistic. I'm simply talking about we can all do our part. We all have a creative ability in us to do things. It could be something very simple. Maybe you just get the urge to help someone in a very small way one day. Maybe you just get the urge to send someone a nice note or a nice email or a text, something, a message, a message of encouragement, whatever the case may be. We can all do something to, to make it better for others around us. So with that said, I, I hope that you've enjoyed this message. And I truly wish you and your friends and family the best mental health and best physical health. And I look forward to all of us being able to get back to leading a normal life and using our abilities to make the world a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast. Make sure that you have subscribed to our podcast and please comment and rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All show notes and links are accessible from our website. Please visit our site and subscribe to our free newsletter at panicattackrecovery.com. All information has been provided for educational purposes. Please consult a healthcare professional about any disorder or condition and the applicability of any information provided in this podcast.